great to be able to be 13 and 0 in the non-conference. Um, fifth time in school history. Uh, so we continue to early in this rebuilding process, do some amazing things. I was very concerned with this game. Um, lucky and grateful that our administration was able to work with us and, and help us out to be able to add San Francisco, to be able to add Oral Roberts. Um, we wanted to try to find a quality win. And um, we played with fire a little bit with both of them. Weren't able to dictate the dates and all those things. So it was hard for both teams. Um, but we needed to have a mature bounce back you know, from the UNLV game. I don't think we're playing poorly. We could have won Fresno. We could have won UNLV. Uh, we were in both games. They made some plays. We did not. So we were able to bounce back and have a very mature effort um, and how to find a way to get a win. So 15-2, uh, and two, really, really proud of them. Great crowd. You know, certainly we're not going to sell out every game just yet. We'll get there. But to be able to have 9,000 in a game that we just kind of put together, uh, national championship football game obviously going on, just shows you how much this community cares about basketball. So um, very, very grateful to get the win. What was the kind of top of the scouting report on how to handle this next And did you guys succeed? Not let him shoot. I mean, I don't know what the hell. You know, he shot 13 threes. I mean, he's he makes tough shots. I thought Jalen did a really good job on him. Um, he, he, but he's just going to, he's going to score, you know, it's kind of like mash mash is going to score too. So we had to switch some ball screens because that big was popping and he was hurting us. And then you got a big on a Smith, but he didn't really burn us too much, but I thought defensively, we did a terrific job, um, in the first half. We just gave up some offensive rebounds. Um, now they're a dynamic. We're one of the best offensive teams in the country. And I thought our, our defense actually was pretty good. Is this similar to Colorado state where. I don't know if you did any kind of pregame hype. To no, 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 no. No, I mean, there, House clearly didn't play well last game, and we needed to get his mind right. And even Mash was beating himself up last game. So uh, they know that he's a good player. I constantly try to tell them it's about New Mexico. It's not about one individual guy. It's not the NBA. It's not you. It's team effort. So um, we had to really work on ourselves um, post-UNLV and really get their minds right because I think we allowed the emotion to take over. Unbelievable. One of the best crowds I've ever seen. And I think we were so down that we, we let our amazing fans down. We need to pick ourselves off the mat and, and get back to work. So it wasn't about one guy. He's that kid's going to score points. You just got to make him hard. Coach, you guys and Alec both had double doubles tonight. I mean, what can you say about what you saw from both of those guys? Oh, it was by design. We had to go inside. Um, we felt like we had the advantage there. We were more mature offensively. Um, foul line, obviously, with Morris hurt him a little bit. I thought he played great. And uh, we wanted to go into him, but we were concerned with the free throw shooting. Uh, but both of those guys were terrific. Josiah is just about as underrated a player as I've ever coached. I never see a guy play as hard as he does. He is relentless on the glass. Um, he's just an ultimate glue guy. Um, you know, so that's got to be where our bread is buttered. And UNLV took us out of that a little bit because of the way they played defense. So we were able to do that better today. You know, this, this is, it could be, said that this is a hard game to play 48 hours after an emotional loss, but is it good to be back on the court this soon? I was concerned um, for sure. Um, that's just human nature to have that crowd. You know you're not going to replicate it. Um, it's just reality. Um, I didn't want our guys to feel at all like, you know, we've really, really sped up this process in a way that I never, ever dreamed of. You never want to lose. But to say after 17 games we'd be 15-2 and two in year two of what we took over is, is nothing short of remarkable. And our fans have been engaged. They've been amazing. Our players are working hard. But we're going to go through some some lumps. Uh, we're not going to win every game. Um, you know, teams are going to give us their best shot, which is great. I mean, that's how you strengthen the program. So um, I'm proud of the guys to be able to get a win. They need some rest. Give them off tomorrow. And then certainly got a, a tough one coming up on Saturday. Defensively, obviously, you know, they still end up with 75 out of 40 points the second half. But you, you guys had steals. You guys had blocks. You guys... I would think, um, at least based on maybe second half recently, 
I thought better for sure. Um, they are, I, I don't know, Ken Palmer, are they top 10 offensively? They're something top 20? Yeah, so they're terrific offensively. Uh, we needed to make it just difficult on them. We thought they'd shoot a lot of threes. They did. Uh, I thought what we did a really good job was got some steals. Donovan had three blocks for a guard, which was great. Um, so better. You know, I mean, we're still with Javante out, Braden redshirting, Quentin redshirting. We don't have a lot of great length in the perimeter. That's just reality. So we got to be a little bit scrappier. But overall, I thought it was a step in the right direction. With the two guys you just mentioned, Braden, can you give us an update? Is it yeah, so he had been kind of dealing with a thumb deal on his shooting hand. And he'd be in practice and out of practice. It would hurt him. He'd try to fight back. He's a really tough kid. So, you know, we said, listen, let's look at this, you know, the, the calendar to see when a medical red shirt could be available. And then if we're at that point and you don't feel right, like, let's get this thing fixed. So he's going to have uh, surgery coming up a couple of days. Not sure the exact day. Um, we'll apply for a medical red shirt. We feel very confident about it. I am very, very excited about both of those guys. Um, and it'll be, you know, it's never great when you have to sit out with an injury, but it'll be great for them to continue to develop. Javante, I'm hoping it's a one game deal. He, he heard it last game, um, tried to go through shoot around today and we made the decision after shoot around. He was just in a lot of pain. So he helps us lengthen the perimeter. So hopefully, uh, back for San Diego state. We'll see. Is that, I guess, the official form or an elbow? Kind of elbow. I don't, I don't know. Make it up. Nobody reads your stuff anyway. I think it's elbow. I don't know. It was uh, the big, big passing <laughs> something you saw on film, or was it? Yeah, it was good. I mean, we thought they'd trap. Uh, they did. Morris made some really good decisions to Josiah. Um, we felt like we had an advantage down there, and, and Morris did a really good job. Josiah did a good job making himself available at the rim. That eleven over in the first half, kind of they were up twenty four, twenty three, and you guys never looked back after that. It was really all defense. Josiah had an offensive rebound and a three point play. Donovan had those two defensive plays and layups in there. Um, that the turning point in your mind? Yeah, I thought we kind of similar to UNLV, like we we're kind of up a little bit, and then we go into halftime, eight point lead, right? Eight point lead, and then we talked to them about, all right, we walked out of this locker room last time, and we were not ready to go, and let's be focused, ready to go. We knew that Earl Roberts would score points. They score points on everybody. We had to be very mature offensively. Uh, but it was great to kind of take a little bit of control um, in the first half and build that lead. But we, we knew they'd throw a punch back because they are terrific offensively. Josiah's ladies, man. <laughs> Don't want to hate, hate on him. Good for him. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I, they're the class of the league. They're, they've been the um, most consistent team over the last, shoot, 25, 30 years. So you got to give them credit. Um, our guys have got to just get some rest. Um, and then, you know, we'll go back to work on Wednesday and try to put together a game plan. But and I went, when I watch San Diego State play, I mean, they are big and strong. Uh, their nutrition center must be amazing uh, because they, they are – they got 20 pounds on everybody, so we better be physical um, because it's going to be a grinded out type game. That's the way San Diego State likes to win. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll turn the page and put together the best of our ability a game plan tomorrow. Building up to this last couple of this game right now, like Coach has been talking to me all that, just trying to get my groove back because I have been a little bit of a slump. I think they did a great job of picking my like energy, my mindset, and I think today I was just feeling really more confident. How about that defense leading the offense, though? Like, you, uh, you had that little spurt there that – yeah, no, I think that's where it really could start for me. I don't have to necessarily start on offense. If I pick it up on defense, it get my offense flowing a lot easier. I think that's what happened to me tonight. You guys didn't have a big turnaround from Saturday, obviously, just the 48 hours, but how much was Max A. Smith on, on the minds of you guards? Uh, this game? We knew he was a big part of the team, but we didn't really want to make it us against him. We made it in Mexico against Oral Roberts. And I think we did a good job. He got his buckets because he's a good player, but I think we did a good job containing him. How does it feel to come in tonight getting, you know, another one under your belt, but also snapping all Roberts to me in win streak? I think I felt good. That, that was really our mindset. We knew they had a good streak coming into it, and we just wanted to play with high energy and get our rhythm back because we lost back-to-back, just get our mojo back, really. This game could be hard to play. I mean, it's, you're coming off two emotional losses. 
is it almost good to come back this quick? I think it was good for us to get this one underneath our belt before we go play San Diego, just to get our mojo back, our mindset, like you're right. I think Coach talked about that in the um, film a little bit. He was like, I know it's going to be a hard game, coming up two losses, sold out crowd, just play with the same energy, basically. Okay. And you guys obviously got plenty from, from the two games inside. I, I know it's not like this was the first time that was the emphasis, but it's been a little while, I think, too, since you guys really got those games going like you guys do something different to get back to, to feeding the post? No, nah, we just we done the same thing. Just uh, tonight we felt like a little more playing inside out because we knew they would have trouble with Mo down there and Josiah. I think the Bigs did a great job playing inside out with each other and us out on the two point line. Did you guys feel the challenge to protect home court tonight? A hundred percent. After a tough loss against UNLV, our mindset this whole season will never lose here. So after that loss, we had to kind of bounce back and redeem ourselves. Um, so I mean, obviously there's two sides to it. Um, physically, rough. Uh, definitely still feel, I'm still feeling the UNLV game. And so packing this one on took a, took a little bit of adrenaline, uh, to get through, but, um, good for us to kind of be able to wash it under the bridge. Cause you know, obviously, you know, it's two unfortunate losses, um, you know, got, got our butts handed to us, but being able to kind of bounce back like this and have one to kind of get them, get the mojo flowing again, get the momentum back going into preparing for San Diego, San Diego state. Um, that's definitely a positive. Cause I think, you know, obviously coming off that it's, you know, it, it's great to say that, you know, we're not going to be dwelling on it, but to, you know, just have that be simmering for a week going into San Diego state, it's definitely, you know, a little rough. And I know some guys aren't, um, weren't feeling too hot after that, that loss, obviously. Um, so being able to bounce back quick uh, on a really good team like this, it definitely helps. You said it was a quick turnaround, but you still have a lot of effort tonight. You still have mm -hmm. a lot of energy. Is that something you kind of pride yourself on? Is that one of the roles you kind of take on the team? Yeah, I mean, I mean that that just that just comes down to like that. That's just like who I am. Um, you know, it's it's the way my mom raised me, and I I mean I every time I put myself in anything, you know, she's like, you know, you don't have to be perfect. But whatever you do, like, you're going to give it 100%. Um, that and, you know, you're not allowed to quit. And so those two things just kind of go hand in hand where, you know, I don't know how much I'm going to have to offer, but you're going to get whatever that is. Um, and so I, I was battling through some stuff tonight, but, um, you know, it was great. I was still had 9,000 in the stands, you know, gave you that little extra boost. Um Obviously, Mash, House, Mo, everyone was kind of flowing. Like, you know, we had a lot of good juice out there, and it, de it definitely helped um, push me through the. How long did I play? Thirty-eight minutes. Yeah, Thirty-eight minutes. So. Another focus for you guys offensively. Coach talks about getting the ball inside, but mm -hmm. how does transition point to you guys getting going when guards are running, you're following them to get those easy baskets? Oh man, I mean, it, it makes it a lot easier when you have such talented guards like we do. Um, to where obviously, you know, it's, they, they definitely, it's, there's a really good balance on this team of kind of knowing like when to feed the hot hand and when, when to kind of get somebody else going. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I mean, it's not a very selfish team. Everyone just kind of does their job. And obviously tonight, tonight, Mo, they, their whole game plan was don't let Mo get 30. Um, so they doubled him every single time he got close to the rim and he still found a way to get his, but obviously he did a great job distributing, uh, distributing. And, you know, he helped found me probably about 10 times and um, probably would have had about six assists if I didn't <laughs> miss so many little bunnies around the rim. But, I mean, obviously we're a, we're a fast, we're an athletic team. And, you know, when we kind of get rolling in transition, I mean, we're really hard to beat. Coach said the other day that social media, he tends not to look at mm -hmm. some of the comments on there unless he's following them, but players do. I mean, I'm curious. Do you guys look at stuff like that, especially after a loss like Saturday? Because fans can be kind of relentless on there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it's just kind of part of the gig, you know. Um, I mean, this is my fourth year, and uh, but this is my really my first year being a part of um, a team with like a lot of publicity and a and a big fan base that um, does kind of show out like they do here at UNM. And you know, as athletes and especially student athletes that represent a community and. You know, it's not like the pros where, you know, it's like, ah, you know, like, you know, we bring some guys in, lose some guys. Like, it's not just like quick turnarounds, like, you know, like one month contracts. And so, like, a lot of, you know, this community, like, they're tied around this team. And, you know, so when we when we go on a, a hot streak like we did when we win 14 in a row, um, it definitely brings that life into the community, gets a lot of people engaged. But 
obviously the other side of that is that when people are watching, people are going to be critiquing. Um, I mean, it's just kind of the way it goes. You don't, obviously, you know, people are going to say what they want and I don't really mind that because, you know, you can't expect to get all this praise and not expect you to ever get any kind of little knickknack, like get, get your whole game dissected or whatever it may be. And so, I mean, people are going to talk, but at the end of the day, we're kind of coach talks about this a lot of, yeah, it was a great analogy used today where um, he's like, you know, a basketball team, like the season, you know, it's like a movie, but with the age of social media, you know, people are kind of critiquing the movie 30 minutes in and it's like, we just kind of got to, obviously it's great to, you know, get little compliments, you know, oh, they're doing good or this and that. But at the end of the day, it's about getting ready for March. Um, and so if we're that team and we have the resume we need to by the end, then, you know, people will be around. And if they're not, then, you know, we wish them well. But, you know, you can't expect to have, you know, a lot of fans or whatever it may be if, you know, you're not winning. And so obviously, like, when you're losing, people are going to say, say bad things. It's just kind of, just kind of comes down to being mature and knowing that, you know, if you're going to value the good stuff, you got to be able to handle the bad stuff. And so, I mean, I, I appreciate all the kind words people say about me and whatnot, but at the same time, I mean, you kind of, you kind of take it with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, like I'm going to go do me every day. And, um, if people like that, they like it. If they don't like it, they don't like it. Time for one more, just like, just like you guys were up at halftime and what was the moment in the locker room knowing that you need to come out in it strong kind of mm-hmm. like, yeah, I mean, I mean, that was exactly what um, coach was pointing out in the locker room. You know, obviously against UNLV, we were up six. Today, we were up eight and a half. Um, obviously, had a lot of momentum going into half and had a lot of momentum going into half against UNLV. And so we just had to be real dialed in. And we didn't come out perfect, but we definitely did a good job not letting the, the hinges off the door. And, I mean, it just – it comes down to knowing it's like, you know, no team's ever put away. And, you know, part of the advantage of playing in the pit is the altitude. And so that first 20 minutes is, you know, it's a little bit easier to kind of go on a run, build that lead because, you know, teams are still here. You know, they, they take some deep breaths. But by that second half, they're a little bit more adjusted. They come out, they're a little bit more comfortable. You know, they're a little bit more adjusted to the crowd. Um, and so it's just about us, like, staying on our A game. And I feel like guys learned a lot from that UNLV game that, you know, it's you can't come out slow. We can't come out thinking, like, all right, you know, let's just keep the same thing going. It's like, no, we have to re re-up the intensity. We got to come out like it's the start of the game. And, uh, you know, tonight we did that and we executed.